Okay, so this is um, another video in the series of videos on Heroku Architecture Credential by Example. The, um, the list of all the other videos are available through a Medium article of the same title. Okay, so let's just review what we did in the previous section. Okay, so part nine. We talked about the release phase, and we used that uh, used the example of da a database migration as sort of the example that we used the release phase for, and that essentially is what allowed us to dynamically create the tables um, that um, we used, you know, in locally, and then we then we uh, did it. Uh, used the release phase to do it in staging and prod. We didn't do review apps. Uh, we're going to cover that now. Um, and one of the important things that we observed through the process is that we didn't really see the database. Uh, we, we did it locally, manually, but we didn't actually have a process for seeding the database. And that's going to be particularly important for the review apps where you don't really have opportunity to log in the database or you really don't want to. Um, and so we're going to go walk through this example, and then through that process, we're going to talk about something very specific to, um, um, very specific to um, review apps. It's called the post deploy step, um, and so we'll talk about that. Uh, and then we'll talk about one-off dynos at the end, which again, it all makes sense once we do it. Okay, so let's um, get started. The first thing we're going to talk about, and I apparently am looking at something here. Um, let me minimize this real quick. Let me close on my email. Apparently, I have my email open. Okay, clean now. Okay. Um, the first thing we want to talk about is rotating credentials. Um, in the last video, I realized I was showing my Postgres credentials on the screen, right? So obviously, I want to be able to rotate them or, or change them, right? Now, the way this works in the hood is if I go to Heroku, Right, and I go to Heroku. Oh, I go to my app, and um, this looks like GitHub that may be having an issue, but we're going to ignore that for now, and hopefully everything works. Um, so I have an app here, right, and I have Heroku here, Postgres, and if you look at settings. These environment variables are set right here. So DWG, blah, blah, blah. This is the credentials that we've been using, right? And that's what our app uses. So the question is, how do you change these credentials like on the fly, right? The way you do that is, there's a command line. I'm not sure if there's a GUI way of doing this, to be honest. Um, it probably is. But there's also a, com a command line way of doing it. So um, history, I'm going to save myself some typing. I did this a minute ago. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to copy and paste this, and then we'll talk about it as we go. Copy. Okay. Um, okay, so what I do is I type in Roku PG credentials rotate. Makes sense. I have to give the name of the database. The database name is what is shown under resources. It's attached as database, right? Okay. You can also figure out that from, from the command line, but anyway. MySA tells me which app I'm talking about, so I'm hit enter. Let's see what this does. It's connecting to Heroku, and if it works out right, it's going to give me a message here. Okay, right. It's basically saying that we're going to rotate credentials, and that's going to cause your app to reboot. That's because it will essentially have new credentials. Your app needs new credentials, which are stored in the environment file, in the environment that it needs to use to connect to the database. So that's okay. I agreed to do this. I hit enter. Boom. Now, under the hood, if you look closely, you can see that I just now released a new ver It basically says update database by Heroku Postgres because that's where the credentials are stored, and it just did a new release log. The app is now running. It's restarted. If we go to Paper Trail, you see it just started just now, right? And you can validate. Let's see if I, of course, I don't remember, but this is, a, I think it was D something else. It changed these credentials, basically, on the fly, and then restarted my app. Okay, so that's how you do it. Um, again, there may be a credential. I'm guessing if I go to here, 
And I, maybe there's some other activity here. Manage? No, that's not it. Yeah, I don't know. I actually don't know how to do it through Heroku. Any other way other than through the command line to rotate credentials. Okay, so that's it for rotating credentials. Now we get back to sort of the meat of this section. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to first go into our database, and our local database, and clean out the database entries that we created earlier. So let me see if I can find the command. Oh, it's not what I want. Oh, history. Four eighty seven. Man. So this is basically connecting to you know, just being, I'm just getting lazy and not want to type out these commands all the time. So uh, there's my to do. Select start from to do, right? So I wanted to delete from to do. Yes. Select. Okay, I've got an empty table now. Okay, so now I've got a nice empty table. Right um, in my my project repository here. Right um, now, FYI, I actually this is my second run at this video because I um, my machine crashed in the middle of this recording. So um, so what I, I already kind of did the step, but I have a file on my desktop called C.ts. So what I did was a minute ago is I copied that to my folder. So let me go into my code and see what I did. Um, and I've already committed it, so I didn't want to like back all out of everything. So all I did was, in the last attempt at this, is I created under source a new folder called scripts, right? And in scripts, I created a file called seed. So let's walk through that seed file real quick and see what it's doing. So it needs to be TypeScript, right? Because um, the entity description, the to-do thing, is in TypeScript. So I need to kind of write this all in TypeScript. Now, I'm going to run this from the command line. This is going to be a command line script to um, actually do the seeding. But um, I need to code it first in TypeScript, right? So as before, I create a connection. I use create connection. I use to-do. I'm defining names, right? I'm going to create it. This is an asynchronous operation, so I create a function called start, and then I actually call it at the end, right? And then what I'm doing here is I'm creating a connection. Um, I'm establishing a, a, an array of promises because what I want to do is queue these all up in parallel and then run them all at the same time. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm basically looping across all the names. So this happens three times. I basically create a to-do and I save it. And then instead of waiting for it, I just dump it into the promises array and then in the end, I just wait for all three to complete, and then I log success. So it's pretty straightforward code, and this is sort of my seed code, right? So that's done. Um, then you want to do is you want to to run this thing. You want to do locally. Let's say we want to run it. I'm going to do npm run build. That'll take the JavaScript and turn it into no, TypeScript and turn it into JavaScript. So now I want to run. Now this needs an environment variable, right? So I do, um, what do I need to do? I need to do cat.env pipe it to xargs. And what does that do? That, that basically dumps out the, right, it taps out, dumps out that line, basically a single line of what's in that dot environment file. So I do that and then I want to run npm, no, no, node dist, scripts, seed. Oh, okay. So that's going to run the seed script, which should connect to the database that's defined in the environment file and add it. Right. So it looks like it might have worked. And let's see if it did what it expected. There's my ABC. Okay, so it did what I wanted. Um, now, um, okay, so that's the first step. But now the question is, I ran it from the command line, but how do I get this to run in my review apps, right? Because I don't really want to run this, just so you know, I don't really want to run this on my, my staging or my production databases because that has like real data in it. This is really just mock data that I need to get up and running either locally in my development environment like I just did, or I need to do it 
in my transitory review app environment. So when you think of, of, of review apps, you should be thinking app.json. So I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to edit the app.json and see. Now I actually already made this change earlier too, so, um, but we'll review it. If I go to my app.json, um, the thing that I added, so this is basically defining what happens in your review apps, right? Remember, right? This tells you what add-ons you have, what build packs, what uh, environment, blah, 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 right? Now, um, one of the things that's in here is scripts. And then, so no, I'm going to, for now, for tests, I'm not, I already provided the scripts for tests, and I'm not going to change it there. Um, what I really needed to do was add a new script just for the, the baseline environment, which is the review apps, called post deploy. It's, it's a reserved word. And the way this works is that it's going to run this command, in this case, node dist scripts cjs, just what we did a minute ago. But it's going to do it after the build, the release phase, then the post deploy runs, but only on review apps. Okay. Now, I'm going to also solve another problem. I Actually, when I was doing the last video, I actually realized I had a problem. Because I went to go to review app and it actually I had a failure. And that's because if you notice the under the add-ons, there is no Postgres database, which means the migration, the review, the the review app process, the release phase where it tries to create the tables will fail because there is no database to connect to. So I actually need to add in an entry here for the for the database. And it turns out I had to Google this. I'm going to Google it again because I've realized I've already forgotten. There's not a good documentation on how to, to describe services here. I could, at least I couldn't figure it out. But if I just do review, Heroku, um, this is app JSON add-ons. And if you go to the section, they talk about the add-on section, but they don't give you a good sense of how to tell what the names or the services or the resources are. Now, it turns out that they actually have an example here with Heroku Postgres, so I'm going to just copy it here. I'm just going to default to the whatever version it gives me. So let me close this up, back in my code, and I'm going to put in uh, just because I want things alphabetical. Okay, so what I'm doing here now is saying when the review app starts, not only do I want paper trail to be um, created, but I also need a Heroku Postgres instance running, and that'll allow for my um, migrations to run, and then my seeding will run after that. Okay, so this should be in better shape. So let's, oops, let me save this. Close and everything, get confused. Okay, so I think we are... Right, so get status. Okay, so I already added the CJS in the previous commit, but now I'm adding app.json. So I'm going to add that, git add all git commit minus m. Um, this is uh, technically here I just added Heroku add-on on this one. Okay, give me a second. Let's let this build. And we'll push this to master first. Git push origin master. Right. Okay, that's good. Okay. And what we're going to do too is just to confirm. Let's watch. So because I push it to master, that should trigger a build on the staging app. And it looks like it is building. So let's let this build for a second. I'm going to confirm. What I'm going to do is we're going to confirm that that the post-deploy step, because it's an app JSON, does not apply to like anything outside of review apps or, for that matter, uh, continuous integration. But it doesn't apply to like apps that are defined outside of that. How we're going to validate that is to make sure that the database is still empty. Um, can let this go for a minute. It's still building. See where it's at. Okay, the build successful. Is it done? Yeah, it looks like it's done. Build finished. Okay, now you can see the release phase is happening. 
Can you look at the log of that? Ah, oh, you cannot see the log of that, unfortunately. Yeah, it's doing. It's running the migration run right now. You can see it's doing something. Um, this shouldn't take that long. In fact, I'm surprised that. I bet you if I refresh the screen, though, no. oh, there's done. Um, there was a way to look at the log of that, right? We did it from the command line, um, but we're not going to do that again. Okay, so we're done. Release is completed. So now I'm done. So this app is now running. If I connect to the app, you can see it's still running, right? And if I go to slash to dos, I still have empty to dos, right? That's because that's that uh, post deploy does not apply here. Okay. In order to test the review apps, I need to actually create a PR. So let me do this. Um, I'm going to do git branch, git branch testing, git checkout testing, code. Okay, so I'm going to make it just a quick change, some dummy change. So I'm going to go to my server, right, and I'm going to go in here and put the word test just under the console log here. Okay, so git status. Get add, get commit. Okay, get push origin testing. So that means now on GitHub, I should have have. Uh, let's see a new branch. Is it done pushing? Now it's testing. Nine branches, yes, that's what I'm looking for. There's testing. Oops. I want to do new branch. See, testing, I want to do new pull request. And then, what? Well, uh, what? I'm trying to think, what did I do here? Well, Really? Hmm. Okay. Let's. I don't know what's going on here. Okay. I well, th this is my second pass at this. I, I didn't think I merged something, but maybe I did. Okay, I'm gonna put test two here just to make sure that this really is different. Okay. I may have just repeated what I did earlier and not realized it. Push origin testing. Okay. No pull request. Okay, this time I did find something. And it's probably it's just that one entry, right? Okay. Oh, there it is right there, right? So now, huh. Maybe that first, I didn't actually commit the first time. I don't know. Either way. Um, I'm going to create a pull request. Now, one thing you notice here is that because I, in the earlier video, I, dis I disabled, like, I forced it to only be able to merge once continuous integration happens. So that's why this is all red right now, which is fine. Um, if I go back to Heroku, I can see that it's creating my release app, and um, let's see if it works. The, the first time I did this, in the first first attempt at this video, I had forgotten to add the Postgres. The review, the the uh, release phase, the build phase succeeded, but the release phase failed because it couldn't run the migration. I was able to use the logs to look at that, see the output, and realize that I forgot to declare the database. So um, let's see if I got lucky this time and got it right. So I'm watching the, okay, the build is almost done. It's making the slug, right? Okay, so that's done. So now it should be trying to run the release phase, which should be, what's well, provisioning all the, it's provisioning all the services, like spinning up a, a Heroku database, 
it's doing the paper trail and then it's trying to run this release code, the migration code against that, which creates the to-dos table. So let's see, this is where it failed last time. Uh, let's give it a minute. Hey, it was successful. Um, let's look at the app real quick, kind of poke around a little bit and see what under the hood. So now you notice that there's a Postgres instance and there's a paper trail instance. So that's that was that worked the way we expected it to. Um, it's using, I didn't provide a plan, so it uses the default plan, which is the hobby dev, okay, which is free, which is good. Um, uh, the app itself, let's see. So Right, that's expecting. The question is, is there data under to do's? This is the to da moment. Hey, it looks like I've got now data. So you notice that the only way that data could have been there is if that seed script ran. So that actually did run. Okay. Um, there, I don't you know. It's interesting. I don't even know. And I don't want to spend time right now. But I was trying to see if there was a way to see the output of the post deploy script. There was a way to see the releases script. It was a command line way of doing that. But I don't recall seeing anything around how to see the output of the post deploy. Like, you know, that the, the, the fact that it said successful, right? Um, unless it's in the logs, which I did may have. Let's look real quick, I'm curious. Oh, the problem is the logs take a few minutes to spin up. So you can look at the logs here too. I'm curious to see if there's a sidebar. Uh, no, this is only showing the dyno that the, the dyno itself. It's not showing the previous scripts. So I don't know. It's a sidebar. How do you look at the post deploy output? I don't know. Um, okay. So that's that. Now, one thing we observed here, we talked about review apps. Let's go ahead and finish this whole process and merge that code um, just for completeness because I don't like to leave things dangling. Actually, what I'll do, let me do two steps here. This is a little bit of a sidebar, but um, I'm going to, I don't like to leave that garbage in my code, so I'm going to back that, that um, I'm going to get rid of this? Yeah, I must not have saved that the first time. Okay, so um, okay, there. that's back to the way it was. I quit this, get status. Get, I'm gonna, this was basically reverting. Um, and then, oh, and there's an, actually this is an important thing here actually to talk about too. Uh, um, revert. So this is coincidentally a good idea. Git, I'll, show, I'll explain in a minute. Push origin testing. So I basically made another change to the branch that the PR is based on. So that then causes that PR to be different, which ca should cause this app to rebuild. So in fact, I should see a new build process. Um, there it is, right? So, so the first step you observe is with PR apps, if you push a new change to the branch, that triggers a new build. So it's going to do a new build. It's going to rerun my release phase. But here's the trick. It does not run the post-deploy again. Because if it did that, it would reseed the database, which now I would have ABC, ABC three times. You know, I'd have two of them, right? Because my script assumes that the seed only happens once. I don't have any logic to say don't run again, right? Um, and it turns out that Heroku behaves the way you, we would want. That is, it only seeds once on a database. So we'll observe that by going to the app and making sure that I still only see ABC. I, don't, I should not see ABC, ABC. Okay, so I'm released. So I go here, open app, and if I go under to-dos, I still only have three entries, not six. 
That's because the post deploy only happens once on a review app. And it only happens in the first successful pass. Okay. So now that that's done, let me go into GitHub and merge all this. Um, um, where's my Git? Heroku cert. And then we'll go to one more concept. Um, and then we'll be done with this video. Okay, so here's my uh, testing PR. So I'm going to go there. So it's not my test. I didn't want to go to branches. I want to go to PR. Oh, it said zero, but it was really one. Okay, here's my PR. My, my checks have already passed, right? Because the continuous integration is already run. So I'm going to merge the pull request, confirm merge. Right, it's been deployed. Delete my branch. And the cleanup is this is now gone. There's a new build happening. And then I'll deploy this to master when it's done. Okay. Um, you know something? I'm going to pause the video for just a second. And this video is getting long. So I'm gonna, while this build happens, I'm going to pause it. Shoot, I'll be back in a second. Okay, we're back. Um, it just took it took about a minute or so, um, and again in staging, and then I'm gonna promote to production. Promote, and again, as a reminder, right? Right now the problem, not problem, but um, if I go to here, I still don't have any data because I don't have any data. Okay, so the last section of this whole activity is to say, well, how do I? Let's say if I want to run that seeding script on my staging environment, right? Let's say if I was staging this app for the first time and I really said, well, I just need to seed this once, but then from then on, I'm not gonna touch it again, right? How do I run that seeding command, but on that instance of the dyno, or in that environment? And the trick is there's something called a one-off dyno. So I'm gonna pause the video for a second because I gotta remind myself how that works. Um, I don't wanna waste time Googling it. So I'm gonna pause it for a second, come back, uh, and we'll, we'll do that. We're going to basically figure out how to connect to that app and then run that seeding script. So let me pause the video for a second. Okay, so turns out super simple. Um, so so far, we this reminder just remind us of what kind of dynos that we've dealt with so far. There's the dynos that happen because they're in the proc file. I think they call those formation dynos because they're part of your formation of your app. So in this case, I only have I actually have two. One is the web dyno, remember, is the one that runs the web service, right? But I also had a, a, a release phase one um, that basically after the build happens, the release phase happens, it spins up a dyno temporarily, does some activity, and shuts down, okay? Now, those are the ones that are in the proc file, but you can actually create a one-off one, which is basically, um, you just run, you can run a command like this. You say, Heroku run bash, and that connects to that one. Now, in my case, I want to provide the, um, I just did this a minute ago to make sure it worked. So I can actually type in Heroku run back from anywhere on my computer, right? I don't have to be in my folder because I'm supplying the app name right here, minus A. And I want to connect to the staging app. And bash is a um, command line interpreter for Unix. So um, I'm going to basically be dropped into a command line interface. So in fact, it's almost like I'm, I'm actually on, quote unquote, on the machine, right? And you can see that it has, the folder I'm in is the, <clears throat> essentially the root of my project, right? Because this is basically, as if I was in my root of my project on my local machine, okay? Also, importantly, um, it also has the environment variables all set up um, as if I already was, you know, running my code. And you can see the database is right here, which is the one I really, really care about. So if I want to run, and then I also have node here, right? So I have node running. So if this works the way I expect, I should be able to type in node dist uh, scripts, right? And then seed. Environment variable set. Let's see if this actually works. Boom. Hey, look at that. So... It looks like it connected the database, dumped the database data in there, right? 
and I used a one-off dyno to do this. Um, and then exit. To validate this, um, I could connect to the database, but I could also just let you open the app and see that it actually has Uh, what did I just click on? I clicked on apparently the wrong button. I want to click on Open App instead, and then wanted to go to To Dos. Hey, I got my To Dos there. Okay, so that was the last material for this section. Was was using the one-off dynos. I was able to connect uh, to my staging app. I can do the same thing for production if I was inclined to then run commands there, one of which could be like a seeding. Again, and that's because the this process, uh, the post-deploy step, doesn't happen in these environments, so you have to manually seed. But that's actually on purpose, because you don't want this database being, what you know, these databases need to be somewhat stable. Okay, so that's it for this video, and we'll, there's, uh, I have no idea how many videos or more to go, but we'll keep on going.